Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal, and this is an in and out tutorial for Final Cut Pro 10. And today we're talking about multicam. Last year, Apple announced that they were going to support multi camera workflows in early 2012, and that's exactly what we got with the 10.0.3 update. It's a very intuitive and very powerful multicam feature. I'm going to be going over the specifics of how it works inside Final Cut 10, as well as show off some of its great features. This is some footage that I have of a music video that was shot by a good friend of mine, Mark Jacobs. And you'll see that I have lots of different types of footage here. I have 1920 by 1080 footage at 2398 H264. I've got 960 by 720 footage shot with DVC Pro HD camera. And I've also got GoPro footage at 1280 by 720. Uh, some of it's 2997, some of it's this sort of off 5992 frame rate, and it's all uh, H.264. And then I also have the AIF, which is the actual CD music that we're going to cut this all together with. All of these angles were shot with playback audio, and the band just played along with it, so it should match up pretty well. But to see if it does, I'm just going to select everything, and then right-click, choose New Multicam Clip, and this dialog box comes up. I'll just call this music video. And I could get into the custom settings here, but I want to just see how Final Cut does on its own without any help. I'm just going to leave this box checked. It says use audio for synchronization. And then I'm going to click OK. Now this part might take a little bit of time because what Final Cut is doing is it is looking at the audio and all the angles and analyzing it. And then it's going to take each angle and match them up and synchronize them to each other angle depending on how many angles you have and how long each take is, uh, this could take some time. Now what's interesting to know is that this video was actually cut on Final Cut Pro 7 and they used the multi-camera workflow for that as well. But to get to the point where they could actually edit it, they had to first convert everything into the same codec with the same frame size and the same frame rate, just so that they could create multi-clips that they could then edit to and that took a lot of extra time. When it's done, you'll get a clip like this with a new icon to let you know that it's a multi-clip. And to view all the different angles, we need to go up to this little checkbox here in the viewer window and choose the new show angle viewer option in the menu. And uh, remember the shortcut, shift command seven, because I think we'll be going back and forth from the angle viewer quite a bit. When I click that, what happens is the viewer splits into two. I now have an angle viewer and then the regular viewer. And when this happens, what you're going to have to do is you may have to rearrange your windows a little bit just so that you can see everything and, and, and get your work done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close the event library because I don't need it right now. And then I'm going to drag this dividing bar off to the left here so that I can make this viewer section as big as possible. And then I'll just even these two out so that I can see it. The multi-clip works like any other clip. I can scrub through it and see all my angles. What you'll notice is that you're seeing only four angles at a time here, and that's the default. But we have like 13 video angles in there, and, and plus that audio clip. So that's 14 total angles. And if I need to see more angles at once, I just go up to the settings drop down right here, and I can choose to display either two angles, four angles, nine angles, or 16 angles. Now, 16 isn't the maximum number of angles that you can have in a multi-clip. I believe that number is actually 64, but you can only watch 16 at a time. I'm just gonna flick this over to nine angles, so you can see a standard nine up, and at the bottom, what you can see is this little icon here. These are our page icons, which show the different banks of video angles, and this will update depending on how many angles you have in your multi-clip. You'll see the first page here is completely full. All nine angles are accounted for. On the second page, if I click on it, you see the remaining five angles here. I'll go with the 16 angles here. I can see all 16 of these at once, or I can use just four or two angles at a time. 
One of the cool neat tricks that is in this new multi-camera workflow is if I'm in the four or two angle display and I don't have a lot of screen real estate like I do with my laptop here, I can actually view these angles in sort of a top-down fashion. So now I can reasonably see these different angles, but I get them all stacked on top of each other instead of in that square. And you'll notice now I have plenty of pages here that I can flip through at any one time. So that works in only the two up and the four up display. All right, I'm just gonna move this back to where it is. On the other side of the angle viewer are the active view controls. The default control for audio and video gives you a yellow frame. And that means that each time you switch angles, you'll be editing both the audio and the video. The middle icon is video only, and if I click that, the audio will remain on one angle while you switch between the video sources. Finally, I can also click on the audio only icon, which keeps your video track stationary, but allows you to swap audio sources. Everything looks great so far, but is it in sync? Well, to check that, I can go to the angle editor, and I do that just by double clicking my multi-clip. That's going to open it up in timeline mode in the multi-clip angle editor. For right now, I'm going to close down the angle viewer and I want to make this a little bit bigger so I can see it a little bit better, like so. And you can see now here in the angle editor, you will have individual rails, I guess you could call them, one for each angle. I can scroll down and you can see all 13 are represented, including my audio clip here. Each angle has a name and an icon for video and audio monitoring. The currently monitored angle in the main viewer is designated by this gray bar. And all I need to do is to click the video icon for another layer if I want to change what's being monitored. And also with audio, I can choose which angle I want to monitor or even monitor more than one angle at a time if I'm checking for sync. And that's what I want to do here because I can tell if they're in sync if I play all these angles at the same time and I don't hear any echoing of the audio. So I'm just gonna hit play real quick. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Nothing is off time. These are all perfectly in sync. Normally I check it with all 14 angles, but I did that already when I practiced this earlier and it was all in perfect sync. Now, if these angles weren't quite in sync, if there were some problems with it, and every automated process will have its gotcha moments, no system is completely perfect. So if they weren't quite in sync, I could slip any of the angles very simply, either with the position tool, or I could nudge them with the comma and period shortcut keys. I'm gonna just undo that, because that was totally fine. And let me go open my angle viewer again. On top of that, if I want to swap the position of any of these clips, like say I don't want this upside down shot here to be my first clip in my viewer, I can do that by just grabbing this little icon and just sliding this wherever I want it to go. And now it's the third clip in my viewer instead of the first clip. So it's very easy to move things around and nudge clips into sync that may not be in sync. You can even add new angles to an existing multi-clip. Just click the drop down arrow for any one of these tracks and choose add angle from the menu. And now if I scroll down, you can see it. There's my untitled angle. And I'm just gonna grab an existing clip here, drag it down into that. And now I have a new clip in my multi-clip. Great, that's awesome, but I already synced up all these other clips. How do I sync this one up? Well, first you choose an angle that you wanna sync it to. I'm gonna use the main CD audio angle and then click the video icon so that it's monitoring that angle. Then click the drop down arrow for my new angle and choose sync angle to monitoring angle using audio. And it's just gonna do its thing and automatically slide it across. And now this angle is in sync with the rest of the uh, multi-clip. And you can also delete angles. If you decide that you didn't want an angle in there, you can also select an angle and delete it as well. Now this is one multi-camera workflow method. Uh, a lot of times this is used for this exact kind of thing. When you have one piece of music and you're only gonna to wanna to lay down this one music track, what I can do is I'll just nudge it. I'll move it all the way down to the bottom here so that it's on the very bottom. And then, and I'm just gonna step out and in the angle viewer, make sure it's selected and then switch to video only. And now when I edit, I can edit all these angles together and the only audio that I will get will be that CD audio. So that's, that's the audio that I want. 
Okay, so let's take this multi-clip for a spin and see how it cuts. Move this down again, and I'm just going to lay this whole clip into the timeline by hitting W on the keyboard. And I don't want to have it draw all those thumbnails, so I'm just going to go over here and switch the timeline view to the smallest clip view. I'm just going to scrub somewhere in the middle of this, and then I'm going to hit play, and as it plays, I'm going to just click on an angle to cut the video to that angle. The song is playing fine, but I'm getting some stutter in the video, which is never a good thing when cutting between multiple camera sources. There's obviously a problem. I have 14 angles here. You know, they're all HD clips, and my computer's having a little bit of trouble showing all those at the same time. So if you see stuttering like this and you're dropping frames, what you may want to do is switch to a proxy workflow. Now, I had brought all these clips in and I created proxies for all these clips. But to play those, you're going to have to go to your preferences. So I'm going to go up to Final Cut Pro, choose Preferences, and here you go, under Playback, you want to choose Use Proxy Media. And that's going to automatically switch over to the proxy clips, which are much lower bandwidth and should give us a little bit better playback here. Oh, much better. Look at that. And now I can just click back and forth. So as I'm cutting between these clips here, Final Cut is making these little ad edits in my timeline. And I'm just going to zoom in so that you can kind of see them. They're really hard to see in this small view. So let me go and change it to a larger timeline view. And they're actually hard to see here too. But they look like little dashed lines. And they can be edited like any other clip. You can see I can, I can grab it and I can, I can slide the clip over. Um, anything like that. And then inside any of these, I can swap the angle. Say I didn't like that. Sh this is I didn't like using this angle at this point. I will just uh, you know click here. Oops. Actually, you have to option click it. See how it has this blade icon when you hover over an angle? Well, if you hold down the option key when you click, it will just switch the angle without creating a new edit. So now I've got this angle here. Okay. So there's a lot more to go over in part two of the multicam tutorial. I'm going to show you the custom synchronization controls, how Final Cut handles non-pro sources, and a couple of things that no other multicam workflow can do.